God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your word. We thank you for uh, speaking to me and giving me this word. I just want to submit myself to you, uh, that you will use me, that you will speak to us today. Just speak to us as a, as a body, Lord, we pray. We want to uh, know your purposes for us and we want to align with those purposes. In Jesus' name, Amen. So even like last week I shared that I heard a sermon and then it gave me an insight that I used for my sermon. Similarly, a couple of weeks ago I went for this Arts Collective workshop uh, very unwillingly. And uh, so one of the messages that I heard sparked something, uh, sparked an insight, an ember I guess you would say, which led me to what I want to share today. Uh, the message uh, today's message is titled building god's kingdom and if you have bibles you can generally stay in exodus because that's where we're going to be i'll be sharing one verse a few other verses but we'll mostly be in exodus so in exodus chapter 25 verse 8 uh, god tells moses have them make a sanctuary for me and i will dwell among them okay have them make a sanctuary for me and i will dwell among them so God asked Moses to tell the people of Israel that he wants a place, a sanctuary, a place that is set apart. That's the meaning of the word sanctuary, a place that is set apart for him. Okay. It was a place where God's presence would be manifest among his people. Okay. A place where I will dwell among them. Okay. God is everywhere. God was present with his people, but he wanted to dwell in their midst. For his manifest presence to be there. So he wanted a place for that. Okay. But he also says have them make. Okay. The people themselves had to make that sanctuary. And that is what we know uh, became, uh, we refer to as the tabernacle. Okay. So let's look at Exodus 25 first. Verses 1 to 8. The Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering from me from each man whose heart prompts him to give. These are the offerings you are to receive from them, gold, silver and bronze, blue, purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red and hides of sea cows, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breast piece. Then have them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them. Make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. Okay. So we know that God is telling him to make the tabernacle, but, but how did it begin? They had to bring God an offering. Okay. And the offerings, and there's a list of the offerings, the offerings had to be free will offerings. Okay. They were to be given by those whose hearts uh, prompted them and that word is impel them or literally force them to give and we we'll look at this again and again the things that were required we see this whole list over here they were costly they were valuable they were precious and we can we see that with gold silver and even bronze or we see that with for example the the, the precious stones but when you read about those times even the fact that he wanted blue purple and scarlet yarn and things dyed red Dyes were also very precious. The specific dyes were very precious, very costly to make. Uh, fine linen, olive oil, all of it, all the things that were required were costly, valuable and precious. They all had to be offered. You see, when a king wanted to do, do something, he would tax the people. God is not taxing the people here. He is saying only those whose hearts convict them or impel them or force them, they are stirred to give. He was he wanted to take free will offerings okay let's jump a little ahead to exodus 35 and we'll see now moses is now speaking to the people and telling them what god wants exodus 35 verses 4 to 10 moses said to the whole israelite community this is what the lord has commanded from what you have take an offering for the lord everyone who is willing is to bring to the lord an offering of gold silver 
and bronze, blue, purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red and hides of sea cows, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breast piece. And then he goes on in verse 10, all who are skilled among you are to come and make everything the Lord has commanded. Verse 20, then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved him came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting, for all its service and for the sacred garments. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewellery of all kinds, uh, brooches, earrings, rings and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. And then it goes on to share all the other items that Moses asked for, how all of them were given. And then look at verse 29. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. So again and again, I mean, we, we see what is required, but the emphasis again and again is all those who were willing. They needed to have willing hearts, willing spirits. Okay. And it was not just men, men and women. And it was not just things. It was also skills. Okay. There were resources required to make the tabernacle, but there was also skill required to build the tabernacle, to make all of these things. And when you look at the whole description of the tabernacle, it was, I mean, even the, the, the curtains, for example, were embroidered with angels and other things. The, the altar, all of that, they, I mean, they were fashioned in a certain way. The candlestick, all the items required, they were, they were specially fashioned. They required artistic ability, they required skills, skills with cloth, skills with uh, gold, skills with wood, all kinds of skills were required. Okay, So those who were willing, they had willing hearts, willing spirits. As we saw that word is referring to people who were compelled, impelled literally from within, not from outside, from within to give. Okay. Let's jump to chapter 36, verse 1. And God says, I have given special people also special abilities. Okay. So Bezalel, Oholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord commanded. Then Moses summoned Bezalel and Oholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled craftsmen who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left their work and said to Moses, The people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. Then Moses gave an order and they sent this throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more because what they already had was more than enough to do all the work. Okay, so again we see that those who had the skill and the ability to do the work were offering their services. But also those who could teach others to work. So it was not just Bezalel and Oholiab, but they were also equipped to train other people and so there was this whole community of craftsmen and artisans and skilled workers. And we see later on also that there were the women would uh, make some of these curtains in their tents and bring them. So there was a whole, everybody was using their gifts as they were able to. Okay. And uh, there was such a spirit of generosity that they had to be restrained. I've never heard this ever happening in any in any church setting where a building project or something like that and the, the pastor said, okay, it's enough now, no need to donate anymore. We've got enough money, we've got enough resources. Okay, But the people had to be restrained because they were giving every day, they were bringing uh, so much morning after morning and it was more than enough. So this is a pattern that we see. We see God wanting something and we see the people responding so extravagantly. Okay. Why am I sharing this? Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16, no need to go to it, it's just one verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16, 
Paul says, "Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you?" You know that that the the uh, that I don't know what is called singular plural. Don't you know it's plural? It's not singular. He's speaking to the church. Don't you know that you yourselves, it's plural, are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you, it's plural. Okay, so basically he's saying, don't you, the people of God, the church, know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you, lives in you, that is a body together. Okay. The people of God are God's sacred place. Okay, when Paul is saying this, he has in mind the tabernacle and then of course the temple, Solomon's temple that was built uh, in in the same in in the same grand manner. Okay, he is telling the people of God that you are God's sacred place. When God told them, "Make a sanctuary for me, make a sacred place for me," the temple, the tabernacle, he's saying you are that place. You, the collective people, the community, you are that place. And he says that God's spirit lives in you. God's spirit is manifestly present among us in our midst, in His church. And therefore, if you look at this whole, I mean, the, the there was a there was a physical reason in history for God to say, build this tabernacle, and uh, then later on the temple. Okay, but it was also foreshadowing the church. Okay that we can look at the example in the old testament and say that's how we're supposed to be not the buildings the people the community but we have to build what god desires he said build me a tabernacle build it to me build it for me this way he gave them an exact blueprint and we know now that that blueprint was so specific because it all foreshadowed jesus himself but here we are, we are seeing that it also foreshadowed his church because we are his body now on the earth. We have to build what God desires the way that he desires. And so everything that happened, this whole thing that I've shared about from Exodus 25 and 35 and 36, it all applies the principles, the manner in which it happened. It applies to highway right now. It applies to the universal church, but it also applies to every local church. And it's, I believe, what God is speaking to Highway right now in this time. He's saying, look at the tabernacle. Glean out those principles. And we have to apply it to ourselves and this and what God is building among us, what He is building us into. Okay. So let's apply some of these principles. How are we building God's temple today? We're doing that by building ourselves as a body. Okay. God hasn't changed, so He still wants a glorious dwelling place for Himself. He wanted a glorious dwelling place in the Old Testament, and so He told them to build this tabernacle. Even today, He wants a glorious dwelling place for Himself. You know, at, at some level, those cathedral builders had some idea what God meant. Okay, they they said that God is so awesome, He needs an He He should be worshipped in an awesome place. Okay, they got it wrong a bit in the sense that it was not just about the place, it was about the people. But what were they doing? They were, they were skilled with their hands. They were skilled with, I mean, when you read the history of cathedrals, I mean, they, uh, they were at the cutting edge of architecture, of building design. Because they wanted to build amazing things for God, they, they discovered principles of architecture that had not been discovered before. Because we want to do this this way, we want to do this that way and how do we build these huge domes? How do we build these things that they will that, that they, they will stay without pillars? And they had to actually discover rules of architecture to build these awesome cathedrals. And I thought to myself, it is so sad that they, they, they've missed the point that those cathedrals were meant so people would come there and worship an awesome God. How were they converted into tourist attractions? that you pay money to enter in. They were always meant to be place of worship. The moment they become just beautiful buildings, let's go and look at the architecture. You miss the point of even the builders. 
and why did they devote their entire lives and sometimes generations to building the best possible building that they could build because they thought God is so awesome he deserves a glorious place to be worshipped and not to come and pay money and, and look around as if it's a tourist attraction they were always meant to be places of worship okay and it's the same and and therefore that same we look at ourselves as a community as a people who worship god and we have to say that we have to be just as glorious as the tapen as the tabernacle wants god wants the world to look at us and see something so glorious that he he has chosen to dwell among and now now the glorious is not wearing fancy clothes and 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 an amazing setup in your church no it's it's the people it's the way we reflect christ it is the interaction between us it's all of those things that are supposed to be beautiful the principle is the same no they were told make a sanctuary for me we have to do the work we have to build this dwelling place that god wants okay let's look at some of the principles they were told to bring god an offering from what they had okay what did this bunch of slaves have oh they had the riches of egypt because the bible says that they plundered egypt and came out how did they plunder egypt when they were told to leave they went and asked all their neighbors for uh, things and they were given the riches of egypt Otherwise, where would these slaves have got gold, silver, bronze, and all these precious things, and including precious stones? They came out of Egypt with them. Okay, so the Israelites were equipped in Egypt itself for what they had to, what they what they needed for the tabernacle. Plus, the spirit of God equipped them. There were special, apart from their own skills, there were special skills given. God says, "I have, I have." equipped bezalel and i have equipped oholiab there was a special impartation apart from what they already had and there must have been many people with skills and abilities already okay and all of these were offered it's the same with us you know when we come to jesus we already have certain skills and abilities and resources and all of that all of those are to be used for the building of god's kingdom god's dwelling place plus he gives us additional things like for example spiritual gifts the anointings of the holy spirit all of those are given after we come to jesus okay and in the same way as they had to use all of these things we are called we are uh, encouraged to give all of these things but it's it's always a free will offering this building of god's dwelling place this building of the church to be what god wants it to be what he has uh, designed it to be is a voluntary act it's a free will offering okay. god is not asking you to give all of these things requiring it of us and i believe that he is not even requiring the tithe of us like it was in the old testament everything is meant to be a free will offering but we look at the old testament and say they were so generous they had to be restrained it should be the same with us we are so eager to give for the building of god's kingdom and i'm not referring to money it's only that's only a small part of all that god wants to receive from us as a free will offering but it has to be a free will offering it has to be something that we are moved to give okay god has given us a design already we look at the church i mean one of for me one of the main things that motivated me to keep on praying for revival is because i saw the church and said this is not the church that i see in the bible and that god desires he has given us blueprints just like he gave moses a blueprint for the tabernacle he has given us blueprints for the kind of church that he wants to see so for example in acts chapter 2 verse 42 onward they devoted themselves this is the, the picture of the early church they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to the fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles all the believers were together and had everything in common selling their possessions and goods and gave to anyone as he had need every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising god and enjoying the favor of all the people and the lord added to their number daily those 
who were being saved that's one example that's one picture blueprint of the kind of church god wants us to be there are others when there are descriptions of uh, spiritual gifts in the church uh, using those gifts together i want to give just one other example ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 and 16 uh, where paul writes that speaking the truth in love we will in all things grow up into him who is the head that is christ from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in work as each part does its work okay. we have a hint over there no a glimpse there of a community where everybody is working together everybody is giving of what they have uh, of their resources including human resources in order for the entire body to be built up to be the kind of body that uh, christ desires and christ deserves on this earth okay all of us have resources material resources uh, emotional resources intellectual resources Uh, skills abilities those that we came into the family of god with those that we receive once we are here but the question is always this are we moved are we stirred are we willing to offer all of that offer whatever we desire for the building up of god's kingdom for the for for this for this dwelling place to be established and the more that we contribute uh, or the the both quality and quantity the more beautiful this dwelling place will be okay are we generous with what god has given us or are we being stingy with it okay i'll do this much i've done my bit have you been restrained yet until you are restrained from giving you haven't done even as much as the old testament people and they were just building a building we are building a community where god comes and dwells among us do we see the building of a dwelling place for god as a priority in the midst of all that we do and that all of us are busy in with so many things but do we see the building of god's kingdom do we see the building of god's house at the priority and i want to uh, contribute towards that you know let me go a little higher up in ephesians chapter 4 this is something i just thought of just now okay uh, we are told that in the church god has given some to be apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers in order to equip the people of god for works of service okay so the, this is the equipping ministry but they are equipping people for what to do those things no and so if you're an apost i mean apostolic ministry which is a pioneering ministry or prophetic ministry or evangelism you know when you bring somebody to church you're fulfilling an evangelistic ministry you are doing what the people did in the old testament you are helping to build the body of christ okay uh pastors when you comfort or counsel or encourage somebody that's what you're doing Okay, teachers. When you teach, uh, when you give a prophetic word, okay, these are just examples of so many things that we know. Romans twelve, the the spiritual gifts we have. If one Corinthians chapter twelve, the spiritual gifts we have. So many ways in which to contribute. And what 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 are we seeing here? Just like in the Old Testament, the whole community came together. They were moved and stirred to the extent that they were impelled. They couldn't they couldn't uh, help themselves. They was they desired so much to build. a beautiful dwelling place uh, for god and it's the exact same thing for us but even more marvelous we are called to build a community where god will come and dwell now that community may have a beautiful building but it doesn't matter when we when we read the history of the church we read about what's happening in different places sometimes the most beautiful uh, uh, people of god live in the most ramshackle worship in the most ramshackle buildings okay. but they came together and they built something beautiful in terms of that community or that people that 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 ecclesia that koinonia 
where God was present and people around could see God is present in that in among those people, and it was attractive. You know, the building of the tabernacle is a story of a people coming together with extravagant gener generosity and giving of themselves to build a dwelling place for God. And I want that to be our story. I want that to be highway story. I don't know what resources you have. I don't know what skills and abilities you have. To some extent, I do know. But there's far more I know that each one of us has to contribute to, to the building of this church. And by the church, I don't mean the Sunday service. Though now that has really become a part of it because God has been, been telling us to separate and do things differently, which means that people have to, uh, to give into those, those small little fellowships that are starting to be built, whether it's Pona or Bangalore, and I'm hearing that could be Trivandrum and Calcutta and all of that. It could be different places. I don't know. It's not, it's not about that. It's about what can you give. You know what God has given you. You know what you have. How can I contribute? How can I build up this body? You know, sometimes just having, I mean, having people together on a Sunday service is, is an aspect of building up together. Just, just getting out of your home and away from your screen and coming to somebody's house. You're already encouraging, uh, encouraging the people who have come together. But there's so much else. It's contributing. It's it's when somebody stands up and does a worship dance. Everybody is blessed. The body is uh, blessed, and something something beautiful is being built. Okay, but it's 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 encouraging one another. It's of course contributing financially if if needs are there, which is what we saw in Acts chapter two. 42 to 47, they were meeting each other's needs. You know, before they met the needs of the poor and the lost outside, they met the needs of those who were in the body. And actually, you look at the, uh, I mean, there's so much emphasis on the poor. You look at the New Testament, there's a lot of emphasis on first taking care of your family, whether it's your own biological family and your own church family. Because that's an aspect of people are seeing, look at the love these people have. It's beautiful. This is that community where God is present. And just as, just as he uh, legislated and required, gave a design for such a beautiful tabernacle that was built that anybody who came there, and then later on Solomon made, it, uh, made a beautiful temple, anybody who came there was, was struck with awe and wonder and, said, and, and wanted to worship an awesome God. The same should be true of us when we gather together. Or even when you don't gather, wherever we are, we are the church we are you yourself are god's temple and god's spirit lives in you and we are only going to be beautiful and glorious if we are like that that community in the old testament and you know this community was not some extraordinary community this uh, this uh, surge of generosity and giving happened you know when after the golden calf incident after this fell so drastically after that was this amazing uh, outpouring of generosity in order to build, I mean, outpouring of generosity that required them to be restrained because they were being so generous in order to build uh, God's tabernacle. And it's just, it should be the same for you and me, for each one of us here. Yeah, I'd like to restrain people. No, we've got enough. We've got enough volunteers. We've got enough worship leaders. We will never have enough worship leaders. Okay. You know, one of the beautiful things that happened in the lockdown, I mean, I, I am absolutely, I think that lockdowns were demonic, but what the devil intended for harm, God used for good in different ways. One of the things was so many people got involved in worship, for example, in leading different things, in prayer. So many people got involved. It should not stop once the lockdown have ended and we're all physically involved in so many things. It should continue. It should it should increase, except it should happen now physically or in or us doing it in different ways. Still wanting to use our skills, our abilities, our resources, and that's how the body will be built up. And it will be that glorious dwelling place that God wants. Okay. Let it not be 
that a few people are doing everything you know sometimes i mean it actually happened with the cathedrals you no know, they went and i mean so many people came together built an amazing cathedral and then who did all the work the clergy and everybody else was spectators they missed the point you know there were such amazing gifts in that body in in, in in those people's standing and sitting in those cathedrals that could have been used to glorify god and the same is true today but we don't want to be that kind of a church we are not that kind of a church and i think god is encouraging us he's saying i want to build something beautiful he's given us various blueprints in the in the new testament okay and it's really is absolutely not about me i think that i'm one of the most uh, i mean i have no resources okay. I, apart from what people give me i have no money at all barely any possessions and i think i'm one of the least skilled people in this uh, in this highway community okay. so if if you're going to be a glorious dwelling place it's going to be because all of you guys are going to be contributing the the gifts and the abilities and the talents and all of that that you have in different ways and we'll see this uh, church but so i think god is just encouraging us he is challenging us but the key word is those whose hearts are moved and stirred those who are impelled and i have no clue what the how god is impelling or moving each one of you i'm only i'm only going to i'm only only going to uh, wait with eager expectation to see what emerges in the next few weeks and months from how god stirs people's hearts i want to thank you lord for your wonderful plans and purposes for each one of us together and as a, individually and together as a community lord i thank you that we are your temple and that holy spirit you live within us you dwell in our midst and i pray now lord for all that you've given us every resource i pray that you will stir our hearts lord to to give generously of what we have in fact generously of ourselves or to see highway be a beautiful dwelling place or to be a community lord that is attractive to those around us because uh, we reflect your beauty lord jesus and we are saturated with your glory with your presence lord god you say come holy spirit stir our hearts afresh and even as we are scattered lord in so many different cities and even countries i pray that you will show us how we can build together the dwelling place that you desire i thank you for all that you've done lord and what you're doing in our midst and thank you for what is to come in jesus name amen